Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, we're going to be covering compartment syndrome. Before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video. You're going to love it. So go ahead and press that like button now so you don't forget. Subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I'm now offering next generation NCLEX reviews. You can book an NCLEX review. You can book a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session or even a consultation se session by going to my website, Nexus Nursing Institute. Institute.com. While you're there, be sure to check out the audio lessons that I have available. All right, guys, so let's get started. Um, carpal tunnel syndrome, and you'll see I wrote a note there. I wrote Hesse because um, since I've known Hesse, since I've been teaching Hesse, they love asking about compartment syndrome. No matter which version of the exam you're getting, it is very likely that you're going to get a question uh, about compartment syndrome. So I just went ahead and put a note there. Um, if you're in the current, if you're currently in a nursing uh, program and you have an exit or a HESI that you'll be taking, expect to see something about compartment syndrome. So make sure that you know this uh, topic. So anyway, compartment syndrome, uh, compartment tunnel syndrome. This is caused by compression of the median nerve. That median nerve's right here, guys. Okay. Compression of the median nerve, which enters the hand at the wrist through the narrow carpal tunnel. So the whole problem that's happening, guys, that nerve that's right there by the wrist, it's being compressed. Now I want you to take a look. Who's most at who's most at risk to get um, compartment syndrome? Musicians, carpenters, computer operators, uh, cashiers, secretaries, people who type. Why? I want you to think about it. Look at my hands. You. They do this, right? If you're playing the piano or you're typing or you're a secretary or you work on the computer, you're constantly doing like this with your wrist. So that compression of the nerve, it makes absolute sense. So it's very important that you guys know who is at risk. Clinical manifestations, I'm right here. Clinical manifestations include weakness, pain, numbness, impaired sensation in the distribution of the median nerve. And I already showed you where it runs along. Numbness and tingling may awaken the patient at night. Shaking the hands often relieve these symptoms. So you see the person who does this a lot, right? In order to get relief, they'll do this. And just this feeling will help them feel better because remember the whole problem is what? Compression of that median nerve. Manifestations of compartment tunnel syndrome include, this is important to know, positive tunnel sign and Phelan sign. Positive, uh, the, ten, the tunnel sign that could be elicited by tapping over the median nerve as it passes through the carpal tunnel in the wrist, just tapping it, okay? A positive response is a sensation of tingling in distribution of that median nerve. Now, the Phelan sign can be elicited by allowing the wrist to fall freely into maximum flexion and maintain that position for more than 60 seconds. When you do this, the positive response is that patient feeling um, that tingling sensation along that median nerve that I just showed you. Nursing um, interventions, what are you going to do for this patient? Adaptive devices, you're going to teach them how to use them, such as wrist splints. They should be worn to hold the wrist at a slight extension to relieve pressure. Again, the whole problem is this, right? They're doing this, and it's pressing that median nerve. So what the, um, the splint does, it causes slight extension so that nerve is not as compressed. It makes sense. Special uh, keyboard pads and computer mice Mouse can also help to prevent that repetitive pressure that's placed against the median nerve. If you're taking HESI, listen, it's been years and they're still asking about the same thing, that um, hand splint, okay? You're going to teach the patient about hand splint. Don't say I didn't warn you. Other ergonomic changes include workstation modifications, changes in body position, frequent breaks from the work-related activities, all of those just to relieve the pressure along that median nerve, because again, that's the whole problem, that compression. Um, early symptoms of compartment syndrome can usually be relieved by stopping the aggravating movement, stopping that pressure, stopping the flexion that causes the pressure on the median nerve, okay? Again, you're going to teach the patient about immob immobilization of the wrist. You're going to teach them to 
use uh, wrist splints. And the wrist splints can be worn at night to help, you know, just keep that wrist in a neutral position. Guess what? I think this video was what, three minutes long? That is your carpal tunnel syndrome in a nutshell. That is the most important thing that you need to know about carpal tunnel syndrome. I know it was short, guys, but you know I give you the meat and potatoes. I don't believe in fluff. So that is your video for carpal tunnel syndrome. Please let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover next or more extensively and also how you want to cover. Do you want it in a lecture format such as this and where I'm teaching out of the book? Would you like it in a question and answer format? like the videos that are released 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Sunday? Or would you like it in an activity format such as the Cahoots? So um, sound off in the comment section. And guys, almost daily, you can find me covering a variety of nursing topics across my social media platforms. So look for me, Nexus Nursing, on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you so much for watching this video. You guys will catch me on the next video.